What about the Portuguese hero we didn't expect? We, but you both mentioned him already, Pepe, of course. I mean, mm. we, di we didn't expect because of his age more than anything else, but what a performance. Oh, staggering. I think Sav alluded to it in the commentary, the amount of first contact. You know, we talk... We, you, me and Rio are talking about what centre-halves would you take at United or what centre-halves would you take at Chelsea, you know, the young ones and that. And he's a 38-year-old guy. He's been one of the top guys around for the last decade. Yeah. Just reading the game. By the way, he still covers the ground. On the ball, he was on point. Just doing everything you want yeah. your centre-halves to do. And he's still, he's got to be still one of the top centre-halves in Europe. And we don't get to see him regularly. But just the way he just controlled distance, you know, ease players out, it was panic. Like, imagine being a young centre half and, and having been able to play next to him and learn. That was like, if, just if, to if, get back there. If, yeah. I'm, if I'm coaching at a football club now, I get, I get these clips and clip them up yeah. and give them to every young centre half at the club to watch in terms of just positional, yeah. desire, um, communication, um, awareness sensing and smelling danger and where to be and, and using your body as well yeah. i think he's everything about his def especially def in terms of defending the box yeah. because they're far too often we've yeah, got 18, 18 clearances 18 clearances yeah, the next best was eight but what we what we normally see with young defenders nowadays is oh are they good on the ball yeah but how, how about defending your box yeah. mm. and far too often we see is, is young defenders and defenders of, of maturity still in the game today they they get their feet muddled up yeah. their body positions are wrong yeah. that was a, a, a almost yeah. Perfect performance in terms of defending yeah. your box, and that is something that should be definitely sent around all the young mm. centre halves. He's, he's a club. fierce competitor as well as now. We've seen him sometimes; he can he can be a bit annoying, oh. certainly to play against. But he's one of those that you'd hate to play against, but you'd, but you'd love to have him on your side. Oh, for sure, he's the most annoying player in world football over the last <laughs> twenty years, without a shadow of a doubt. Like he's he's, <laughs> he's wound right up, up he's wound up. Lovely everywhere. fella off the pitch. But but I'm sure he is. But what was that? It's a living, really. It's a living. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, just like Rio said. But like, listen, you're talking to the centre half here, but the body position, just little things. But like when the ball comes in and a cross is coming in, and he gets the right distance on it. He, he's not putting it into a dangerous area. He's leaning on players at the right time. You never ever feel with him like he's going to do something rash. Mm. He just so he's, and at 38 to still be. And, and he's by the way, Thiago Silva's yeah. 36. He's probably up there. And mm. you know, where these young centre halves need to watch these players and mm. do what they do. Why, why are players Basically, suddenly seeming to get a? bit more of a career, longevity-wise. Nutrition. Ronaldo's 36. Think, things like nutrition, uh, yeah. understanding recovery, the data that they've got in front of them now to understand when they yeah. should train, the intensity levels that they change uh, on a daily basis in training. All that type of stuff that they've got at their fingertips now definitely puts them in a better position to be able to have longevity with their career. Yeah. And, and they, they have to utilise that. They have to, to, to buy into that, and they are.